everything means something in the grander scheme of things, even if it doesn't make sense. Because don't forget, you have to thank your low vibrational days for giving you contrast in the building of your foundation of your high vibrational happiness. Because one cannot exist without the other. There's no such thing as only light or only darkness. That's why I don't speak only the good of people. I speak only the truth of people. Because when you speak only one facet of an individual, you are removing the panoramic spectrum of the reality of that individual. In other words, you're taking a piece of cardboard and covering half the screen, and you'll only view half the picture. So it's always best to speak the entirety, the reality, the truth of an individual with everything they've done. Because if you consciously are omitting specific aspects and certain points or areas in their life that have already happened or occurred, then you are living a delusional fantasy world and choosing only to see life through rose-colored glasses. And that is not a healthy or advisable thing to do. You have to see the reality of everything as it is, as it stands, not as you want it to be. Because then that is when things become very quirky and very odd and very skewed. You don't want to find yourself doing these things. Your perceptive lens must be comprised of the everything of everything. Acknowledge the low vibrational energies. Just don't live there. Don't pretend they don't exist. Because then again, you're living a make-believe pretend fairy tale life. And that's not living at all. That's a fictitious, you know, ambulation that you're actually just perpetuating on yourself. And that's not a good thing. Because then you're just being disingenuous. And the universe recognizes everything. So if you are at a disingenuous space and you're projecting that energy, that's exactly what you're going to be receiving in return. See, this is what fortifies people's perceptions on things. Their, their perceptive lens, because they vibrate on a frequency of being phony and disingenuous. They project it out and the experiences validate their reality. So it's like, see, I told you. See, I knew it. See, I knew I was right. That's exactly how it goes. You will always do that unconsciously. Your energies will always project in a multi-directional wave. It will activate frequencies of a vibrational equivalent nature. And they will respond in kind by offering you experiences that match the dominant vibrational frequency of the transmissions that you're broadcasting and projecting. This will reinforce and fortify your belief system. Because you will only be surrounded with the things that your perceptive lens has deemed palpable, or palatable, or acceptable, or deemed permissible to enter the gates into your mind and gain access and residence. It's just that simple. It's like you get a VIP pass, but you're only going to give that pass to the ones that you allow to go in. You know, this is selective in nature. You don't just give it out to anything. No. Okay. Uh, you're in alignment with my frequency. You get to go. You, I don't know who you are. You're not coming in. That type of thing. So by not acknowledging the other elements of life, you are selectively isolating yourself within an emotional penitentiary of a one-sided, closed-minded existence. And you have to be really cautious with these things because this universe is comprised of a multitude of energies and elements and facets, different personalities and characters, different perceptive lenses, you know, different walks of life. People have so many different stories to share. Why is that? Well, hypothetically speaking, let's say we're on the same bus. And we're on the same road of life. When we get to our destination and we all get off, what stories do we have to share if we've just taken the same trip on the same bus, the same route, the same, the same journey? Nothing. That's the reason why we're going to the same place in the end, which there is really no end, but we're all traveling from different ways. Like example, from wherever you are, how many different ways are there to get from where you are to Alaska? There isn't just one way or two ways or 10 ways. There's thousands of ways to get there. That's the beauty of life. The diversification of eternal life. The polychromatic colors of infinity. Not the monochromatic madness of the matrix. Black or white. You know, you don't want to have that staunch, steadfast, stilted, you know, mentality that's cemented in the disempowering beliefs of my right, I, I'm, I'm right, my way is the highway, and all, you know, all that nonsense. That old, archaic, you know, antiquated, stifled, stagnant, sedentary mentality that metastasizes into just blindness and pride and prejudice. That's why people fly flags 
It's not out of pride that they fly flags. It's out of blindness. Because when you fly a flag, you're actually showing a prejudice symbol that you're proud to be separate from something that is unified. And that's how they get you to do these things. So just recognize every aspect. You know, you can't disregard things because you don't like them. If they're there and they exist, the universe had a reason for creating it. Far beyond your mortal comprehension, perhaps, but nonetheless, rest assured, if it is there, it exists for a reason. It's just because you don't accept it or approve it, or you don't agree with it, doesn't mean that it should just magically disappear from the face of the earth. Because it's there for a reason. So, just embrace the unity of things, even though they're not unified, you know? People have a tendency of taking the simplicity of divinity and turning it into something so convoluted and overly complicated and unnecessarily, you know, intricate and involved. It doesn't have to be that way. And I myself am guilty of that, doing that a million times. You know, I don't do it anymore. But sometimes you feel that little thing creeping back up, that programming mechanism says, hey, I think, and I'm like, nope, mm -mm, I ain't going that route again. Sorry, not this time. You got the wrong customer, man. I'm going in a different direction. You're not tapping into my medulla oblongata and playing freaking monkey games inside my head. No, 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 no. Not doing it anymore. No way. Because then that is what really hinders you, man. And then you start overthinking things and imaginary scenarios and every type of uh, what can go wrong and all anticipating the worst. And it just, it's crazy. It's a never ending cycle of just lunacy and madness. And you don't want to get on that, that hamster wheel, man, because you're not, you're going nowhere real fast. Trust me. So anyway. If you're going to build your perceptive lens in a brand new direction, you have to formulate that perceptive lens using the elements of all the energies of the universe. You can't be selective in these things. But when you come to create your vibrational environment, only allow the high vibrational energies in there because you don't want anything to contaminate it of a low vibrational nature. But always respect and acknowledge those low, vibra those low vibrational elements as another element of the universal energy that is integral to the balance and harmony of the cosmos. You just recognizing their existence and you respect it. You just don't put your energy there. That's the difference. This is the whole premise of this video. You know, you can't just say, I don't want to be involved with any of this stuff and just create a delusional fantasy world like a meditative Buddha bubble and you just live in there and pretend like you're incapable of being negative because then you're just, you know, you're only fooling yourself. By recognizing that you are every element of every element and you are harmoniously creating symmetry, equilibrium, balance, harmony, and alignment with those elements because you're transmuting the heaviness into what you need it to be for balance as an anchor, as a fulcrum, then you're really onto something amazing because you are comprised of every energy that every other energy is comprised of because everything emanates from sources. Source is the creation of all things. So how can you be separate in any aspect? Only in your head you are. But in the reality of all things universal, you can never be. Because you are a single drop of soul in an endless sea of source. That source is God. God. God is the God of all things. Source, almighty consciousness, divine, whatever name you want to use, it's all the same. You can no more separate yourself from source than you can run away from yourself. Then you can secede from your past. Everything is one, whether you want to accept it or not. So what I do is I say, okay, I use all the heaviness of my past and the darkness and the pain and everything. I use that as a catalyst to springboard me into something amazing because I'm saying thank you to those wounds that gave me my wisdom. Because from your deepest and most darkest tragic wounds arrives your greatest and most harmonious wisdom. Because don't forget, a seed needs to be put in the soil in order to germinate and take root. You know? And it needs to be put in water too. They have hydroponics. But that's a different type of gardening. What I'm referring to is old-fashioned, old-school, man. The indigenous folks, they used to take seeds, put them in the soil, water it, a lot of sunlight, nurture it, tend to it, harvest it, cultivate it. Beautiful. That's exactly how you get your wisdom in the deepest and darkest places. Because you come from something universal and cosmic. We all do. So I wish you the very best in your journey. God bless. Namaste. Amen. And always stay strong, stay safe. And remember, Stand firm and keep the faith. Your rewards shall be great.